What is going on everybody? My name is Chris. Welcome to Bourbon Sane. We're back today and we are drinking some more Texas whiskey. I've been on a massive Texas whiskey kick. Matt from Whiskey Crusaders was kind enough to send me 24 samples of Texas whiskey and I immediately fell in love with almost all of them I tried. Very unique flavor profile which we'll get into in a little bit. Today I am talking about Treaty Oak Distillery. Now Treaty Oak is located in um, Dripping Springs, Texas. And these are their three main expressions. They were kind enough to send me these expressions to review. Couldn't be more excited given how much of a Texas whiskey fan I now am, just from the small sampling size I have tried. So let's talk about the expressions a little bit. First up is their own whiskey, and this is the Ghost Hill Texas Bourbon. Uh, this is all their own product, not sourced. Second up is the uh, Red Handed Whiskey, a Red Handed Bourbon. And third is the red-handed rye. Now I'll talk a little bit about each of these expressions when we get into the tasting and everything, but um, one of the most transparent companies I have seen, I mean anywhere, is Treaty Oak. They are completely, they completely disclose where they source from, how much they source, the mash bills, age of everything. So that's really nice. That's really refreshing to have a distillery that actually will disclose information to you and not just beat around the bush and tell you all. Oh, you know, distilled here or patiently aged, this and that. It's like they will actually tell you where it's from, what's their own, what's not, the age, the mash bill, everything. So that's great. Let's get into the first uh, the first whiskey from them, and this is the uh, Ghost Hill Texas Bourbon Whiskey. Now this comes in at 47.5%, and the cool thing about this bourbon is they use all local grains, so local heirloom grains. This is a two-year-old aged whiskey, and the mash bill on it's pretty unique. It's 57% corn. 32% wheat and 11% barley. So they do use um, Texas wheat, the yellow number one corn, and then of course it's aged in um, new charred oak barrels in Texas to give it that Texas profile. So pretty cool and I'm excited to get into this first one. So let's go into it here. Pretty light color. Again, only two years, so I wouldn't expect it to be overly dark, but pretty light in this. Hmm. Now I did just pour these uh, before I, I pulled up the, uh, the camera today, so these are fresh out of the bottle on here. Definitely a dusty corn note on this. Um, it's got that uh, classic Texas profile, that's what I describe it as, kind of that um, smoky, smoky corn, almost smoked corn, like a grilled corn if you will which is very, very unique and very cool. I mean that, sometimes I'll get mesquite in a couple of the Texas whiskeys I've had. It's kind of like that, but it's not the same type of uh, smokiness. Definitely dusty corn smokiness, but um, also nice fruitiness as well. I'd say some like dark berries, dark fruits. It's got a really good nose actually. A little bit of that um, alcohol burn comes through, but really not much. Um, not much. Texas seems to do uh, some good stuff to uh, to whiskey, so that Texas heat. Let's give it a sip, guys. Cheers. Mm. There's that Texas profile. So that Texas dusty corn. Yes, dusty corn, nice sweetness. Um, you know, the wheat in the mash, but I guess I could see it a little bit. It's got a little bit of a cinnamon kick is how I would describe it. Cinnamon with that dusty corn, that Texas smokiness, if you will. Very nice. Mmm. That's solid. Hard to believe that's a two-year-old whiskey, really. Um, I, <laughs> I love that smoky, dusty corn flavor. That, that classic Texas profile. I'm a, I'm a fan of that. Um, and that is... That just this this glass here just encompasses that whole flavor profile. Um, it's kind of what I think of when I think classic te Texas whiskey, and only at two years age, so very nice expression. All right, moving on to sample number two. This is the Red Handed Bourbon Whiskey. Now, as I mentioned, this is sourced, and they are completely transparent about that. Now they call it Red Handed because they were caught red handed stealing the barrels from uh, from these other places. So that's pretty cool. That all goes along with the transparency whole side of things. Um, it is 47.5%, so the 95 proof again. And the breakdown of where this comes from, fortunately they do put it right on their website. 
They have a four-year aged 66% corn, 14% rye, and 20% barley from Davis Valley Distillery in Virginia. So some Virginia juice. And then the Oz Tyler Distillery in Kentucky with a two-year-old, 70% corn, 21% rye, and 9% barley. So this is a combination of a two-year and a four-year bourbon. And um, one being from Kentucky, one being from Virginia. So I'm not expecting much of the, um, the Texas profile. Definitely darker than the first whiskey. Um, let's do them side by side. Eh, actually pretty similar in my light. Um, so it is a little bit older though, four year and two year versus just the two year. So doesn't smell anything like Texas whiskey. That is for sure. <laughs> it's more a uh, classic bourbon you'd picture, you know, tiny bit of alcohol burn on the nose, but still again, very, um, masked quite well. Um, whatever they do with the blending of these barrels is, um, is nice. It doesn't smell super youthful, like a four and a two year old. Again, dark fruits come through. I mean, the vanilla, the caramel is also there as well. A little bit of dark fruit in this too. Maybe some dark cherries. And the barrel is definitely present. Um, a lot more barrel, none of that smokiness like I was getting with sample number one with the, with the ghost hill, but very nice. Mmm. Ooh. That reminds me of some kind of candy. Mmm. I can't I can't put my finger on what that is. I'll have to I'll have to think about that one. Um, but very nice sweetness on the palate. Almost no alcohol burn, so none of that rubbing alcohol ethanol comes up. It's really really just nice sweetness across the palate. Um, a pretty thin finish. Again, it's only 47.5%, so not overly high. But that fruitiness, sweetiness, sweetie, sweetness. Oak is hitting me on the back end on this. You know, this packs a lot more flavor than a lot of other two, four year whiskeys I've had. So that's a good thing. Um, they're, they're packing good flavors in here. I think the blending is very nice on this because it's got a, a flavor profile I quite enjoy. During these reviews, I, whenever I get sent samples, I tell them, you know, hey, I'm gonna be honest in these reviews. So what I'm telling you is not BS. Like this is how I really feel about the whiskey. Um, I'm gonna tell you the truth if I don't like it. So, but there's an extra layer of sweetness on the front end and I'm gonna think about that and um, keep an eye out for uh, my Instagram or or Patreon, I'll, um, if I figure out what this flavor profile is, I'll put it on there for you. Mm. Solid, solid stuff though, really good. All right, and the last expression we're gonna be reviewing today from Treaty Oak is the red-handed rye. Now this is a 10-year aged rye whiskey, and it is actually again sourced, and this is from um, Shenley Distillery, aged 10 years, 39% corn, 53% rye, and 8% barley. So we're talking a barely legal rye again here, um, but it is 10 years, and they also up the proof on this to right around 100 proof. So um, very cool, and again, they go, they kept, uh, kept true with the red-handed uh, name on this. So red-handed, again, they're stealing those barrels, but the transparency, very nice. I've been into rye whiskey big time lately, recently put out a couple rye reviews, so I'm really curious to see what I think of this rye. Let's get into it here. Very, very light color on this. Very light color. Um, completely different than the first two glasses, so. This definitely smells um, rye. Probably because I'm coming off the back drinking two bourbons that I'm, I'm getting a lot more rye kick from this. But um, it's actually got a vegetal note to it. Some kind of fresh vegetable, like almost like a a fresh jalapeno or fresh something, some kind of vegetable. Classic rye on the nose though. I mean, um, it's very peppery. The cinnamon is there. Orange peel, lemongrass, all the, the normal rye notes that I will describe in rye that I pick up, um, they come through on this. 
As far as age goes, I don't smell 10 years in a barrel on this. Um, let's give it a sip. Maybe it'll come through on the palate. Cheers, guys. Mmm. Unique flavor. Um, very unique flavor on that. I'm not getting as much of the, um, that orange peel, lemon zest, that, that fruitiness that I was getting on the nose. Um, not as much on the palate, but an extra, again, an extra layer of sweetness. All of these to me tended to be on the sweeter side of the profiles, which is a good thing. If you have a sweet tooth, I think all of these are going to be good options. On the nose, it just smells like a very classic rye, but on the palate, hmm, yeah, on the palate, there's an extra layer of sweetness, nice sweetness. I mean, again, more more brighter fruits, I would say, even like some green apple in this. Yeah. Green apple, and then again with the orange peel and the lemon peel on the nose. Not as much on the palate, though. Another really good expression. Overall, I am really impressed with Treaty Oak. Um, my first time trying them, I wasn't sent any of these samples during my uh, Texas Whiskey Nights or my Texas Whiskey Reviews. So first time trying Treaty Oak, and I am impressed. Really, with distillery overall, I mean, I've always said I have no problem with companies sourcing whiskey. Um... The, the issue comes in is if they're sourcing whiskey and they're doing a bad job blending it, or they're sourcing whiskey and they're not transparent about it, so they're not telling you where it's from, the specifics of it, and that really bugs me. Treaty Oak's so transparent, so forward and forthcoming with what they're doing, and I think that's great. You know, hey, put out some good blended source stuff while you're aging your own things. And now in Texas, with two years, you can get great flavors out of a two-year whiskey in Texas, so... And they're doing it. They are doing it with their ghost till. It's classic Texas profile. Um, I would recommend this to anybody, um, especially if you've never had Texas whiskey. I think this is a great intro to the Texas whiskey profile. I mean, I really do because classic bourbon drinkers are people who like bourbon first. They like that sweeter profile in general. And all of these have a nice layer of sweetness, an extra layer of sweetness. Even the rye had a good amount of sweetness on the, um, on the palate. So I definitely recommend it. One last thing I forgot to talk to you guys about is price. So let's talk price real quick. About $50 for the Ghost Hill, about $40 for the Red Handed, and the Red Handed 10 Year, the Rye, is about $65. So they are a little bit pricey, but most craft distilleries are a little bit pricey. I 100% think that um, both the bourbon expressions are worth that price point, the $50 and the $40. Great options, great expressions. And, and the Rye too, I would try to get a pour if you can first of the Rye. Um, but I mean, 10 years age, that's a long time. Thank you so much for watching this review today. If you guys like these types of videos, please do hit that like button and that subscribe button. Also, I do have an Instagram and a Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, check it out, patreon.com slash bourbonsane. We've got challenge coins still up. We're getting low now, but if you'd like a challenge coin, email me, bourbonsane at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for watching the review today. Stay insane, everyone.